now. <laughs> starting now. We're starting now. <laughs> We're For starting everybody now. <laughs> Cheers, welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with Christy. Wes is making his debut. Indeed. Nice to see you. <laughs> Matt. Cheers. John. Peace. And Mike. Hoi hoi. Yeah, a big group of us today. Uh, today I'm drinking a coffee stout from uh, Valley Center Brewery. Oh, I haven't, I haven't heard anything oh, really? from them. Oh, really? There's a Valley Center Brewery. It's yeah. Really? Riley got this for me. Uh, it's, it, I, I like coffee stouts, and this is a good coffee stout. So So does it have caffeine in it? Or just Probably the not. Coffee? Just the co taste of the coffee. Yeah. Uh, Matt and I uh, brew once in a while. Uh, and we'll usually steep the coffee in the in the beer as it's as it's as we're brewing the other preparation uh -huh. for boils when we normally do it. Right. Obscure reference. There was a Drew Carey episode about that. How to do coffee beer. Yeah. Really? <laughs> was yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Totally obscure. It was before like Sparks and all that stuff. Yeah. That was a little bit obscure. <laughs> but coffee beer. Yeah. That yeah. sounds better than Sparks. I'll tell you. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so what are you drinking, Matt? I'm drinking uh, Stone's 18th anniversary. The reason I'm drinking it is because I was given a 22 for free. Ding, 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 ding. So I, I'm not going to turn down free beer. Still good. Uh, yeah. I didn't like it as much, actually, when it first came out. I don't know how an IPA got better, but <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Hey, they have that Enjoy After. Maybe it's... IPA. Is that an IPA? Enjoy Why, isn't it? I'd like it. Like. They have an enjoy after. I think that's an There's IPA. There's an enjoy after. I think it's it's some sort of special kind of IPA. That I don't remember what they call it. I know it's well hopped, but that's what I've heard. Extra hoppy. Yes. you got to blend <laughs> hops well, though. If you, if you screw up hops, you're going to screw the beer up. Yeah. John? Staple, Synergy, Gingerberry, Kombucha. Kombucha. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's the way. Fermented beverage of choice. You ever get the ones with the, the chia seeds in there? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Pretty tasty, aren't they? I had they're recently kind of uh, because they're yeah. slippery sucker. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yes. I recently had a, a master brew ginger, which is really oh, good. Yeah. It has a lot of a good ginger burn on the backside. It's nice. real nice. Yeah. yeah. Mike, ginger is pretty amazing. It I'm is, starting right? off with that. How does that relate to my beer? It doesn't. Uh, <laughs> I'm drinking uh, Liberty Ale by uh, Anchor uh, Brewing Company up in uh, San Francisco. Uh, bought it again. I've had it before. Uh, it's pretty solid. That's why I keep getting them. I can't. I have no complaints about it. It's a nice pale ale that's slightly more expensive and, and wonderful. So yeah. So would you say the people that make that are they classical liberals or are they? <laughs> Haven't the foggiest is probably just a name that they put on there. You might not want to look it up because you might want to not. Liberty's kind of cool now, so yeah. people yeah. just use them to throw the word around. You know? yeah, yeah, if I look it up, I'll probably be like bummed out. Like, oh, they don't really care at all. They was just a name. <laughs> <laughs> unlike oh. Agro Dales. Yes, unlike Agro Dales. Yeah, we're drinking tea. Yeah, we're drinking tea. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they're drinking in there. <laughs> we, we talk too much. You could have pretended <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> <it's> tea. <laughs> nah, we're not on the talk show host bash. They don't have anything in those mugs. Those <laughs> uh, so tonight, we were sitting around and we realized we've never straight out talked about the non-aggression principle on this show yet. To the best of our recollection. <laughs> if we did, link it in the may comments. May maybe, uh, maybe as an as it related to other yeah, other yeah. topics, but yeah, I don't think we've ever talked about the non-aggression principle as the topic. main, as yeah. the topic. Yeah. It's always and been implied, right? Yes. It's implicit in all the discussion has been. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure we've mentioned it plenty of times, but actually going over it I think is important for probably not the regular viewers, but people who are just getting into voluntarism. I think it's a very important topic. I'm sure they've heard it before, but to go further into it, in case you stumbled on our show first, well, here it is. You know, like, yeah. If you hear now. And congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, often, often referred to as the NAP. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, the non-aggression principle basically states that uh, you should not aggress against another person or his property or the, her property. The initiation of the force initiation. is immoral, right? Right. 
But definitely not the whole episode, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. Now, what are we going to do now? I heard it's so, also called the ZAP, right? Zero Aggression Principle. Right. I have yeah, heard that a couple yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ZAP sounds a lot cooler, yeah. first of all. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of flirts with yeah, pacifism, maybe, there. you know. I don't know. I'm just throwing that well, out there. Oh, we can make up a new one. No, does ZAP flirt with since you don't no, I think zero. it's synonymous with NAP. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. I'm pretty that, sure. We were looking at the history of NAP and where it got coined and stuff, and it looks like... I mean, there's there's definitely hints of it throughout history. What was it, uh, Epicurus? Right. Way back when, 300 BC or something. Um, and then Thomas Jefferson seemed to have a more coherent um, understanding of it. But then Ayn Rand, I guess, is the one that really made it Stitched specific, it where she said, through the character of John Galt in Atlas Shrugged, thou shalt not initiate force through the physical means of fraud, which is kind of an indirect force because the person is you're trading with someone under false pretenses, right? They're taking, in a sense, taking from you forcibly that you wouldn't have had a, a trade if you would have known what was going on. So you're not supposed to do that. And that's how we have a free society. Like The precondition for a civilized society is for that um, level of respect for individual rights. Reciprocity. Reciprocity. Yeah. yeah, so Jefferson talked about harm, and that some of these other theorists in mm -hmm. history talked about harm towards others. Um, and some of the 18th, let's see, 19th century individualist anarchists like Bakunin and Tucker talked about um, basically respecting other people's freedoms. And so that there's that boundary of like, you have all the freedoms you want as long as you don't infringe on other people's freedoms. But it seems like Ayn Rand was the first one to really pin down what does that mean? What is the nature of freedom? And you really can't define that unless you understand what non-aggression is, right? How you violate people's person and property. And what's the nature of non aggress of a civil society? You know, yeah. What what is civil? What's being civil? You know, non aggressing between people. So Could this kind of come down to like what they, you know, used to call common law, that the only things that were illegal would be like robbery, assault, fraud, mm -hmm. you know, rape, murder, you know, rape you know, murder, rape, unless assault. it's done Proven by the government, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 unless yeah, it's yeah, done yeah, by the them, then it's cool. But you know, generally like those were the only things that were illegal for you know, going back to, you know, uh, uh, the Norman invasion of England, practically, you know. Mm. And well, well, really, you, going back to the Roman days, you had yeah. two different types of law. You had yeah. you had common law, mm -hmm. or so natural law, which is what you're talking about, and mm -hmm. then you had then you had state law, which is Civil. an aggression against uh, against the state. Yes. So if you didn't pay your extortion fee, or you you did, you harmed one of their stolen buildings or something. Then they would. So there's an actual. So the difference would be that there's an actual victim pointing to. There's right. Actual in, harm in common in common law, there was an actual victim in. In civil. Si huh? is, that's the root of civil law, right? Is because that's oh. Roman law. Yeah. Because this tree is, I believe, what it's called in Greek. Sir, I believe you've harmed the state by urinating on the side of this marble building. <laughs> <laughs> we need to collect some money from you, and guess that's how it started. And, and actually. Uh, the English law came from the Roman law, mm -hmm. which then translated yeah. to the American law that we have today, which is the idea that when you steal from another person, you're not harming that other person, you're harming the crown, oh, yeah. which, is, wow. which is where you get, uh, you know, anybody has, versus the state. Yes, the and state apparently the bastards still state. do that in England nowadays. If you say, well, whom did I harm here? If you kind of do that whole approach in court... They'll actually point to a picture of the queen on the wall and be like, oh, you injured the queen. <laughs> With a straight face, they'll say that. It's amazing. Uh -huh. Of course. Yeah. I mean, you'd never go to court in England. I've <laughs> <laughs> heard, heard stories about anywhere. it where, like, you know, people have actually, like, recorded it, and they'd be like, it was recorded, not, you know, audio, not video. So, But they would say, like, no, the guy pointed to the picture of the queen on the wall and said you injured the queen. You, you know, know, I kind of want to go back to this idea of fraud for a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when you talk about fraud, I do you think that there's a bit of a gray area there? Like, for instance, suppose I sell you a product mm -hmm. and I don't tell you every single thing that I know about this product. And for example, a car. So this is a common yeah, thing, sure. right? Is it a lemon? How much work has been done on it? Is right. it about to go, you know, south really quickly? What do you call an initiation of force, really? It's one thing that I think can be a gray area. Uh, what exactly is an initiation, and when is it self-defense? Well, is in, it intent would be 
I, I think is where I would start off with like if the guy didn't know it had a like you know to use, use an older car thing like the guy didn't know it had a bad carburetor he didn't he didn't commit fraud upon you because he didn't know. Yeah. So it's intention. You know, if he knowingly knew, oh, that has a car, bad carburetor, oh, I'm just yeah, going to forget yeah. to mention That's that. Good. Then it would be fraud. Yeah. So uh, I suppose that one can be reduced a little bit. But uh, So then, you know, with cars, they have the as-is, sale as-is. Right. Is. So that's kind of a contract that uh, basically says, once you buy this, it's lot. your responsibility <laughs> to take care mm -hmm. of it, right? Yeah. So the, you know, the market has a way to, to deal with that. Um, that's a good point. But so informed consent seems to be the basic principle there legally, you know. Did you inform the person of the things that you knew um, so that the trade, the money that, that they, they gave you in exchange is, you know, that fair win-win scenario? Now, obviously, in the marketplace, people have knowledge of what they're selling to other people that they may not, not have knowledge of. So there's mm -hmm. those, those marketplace advantages for profits, right? Like, like so in a swap meet, if the, if the person only knew how much uh, this thing was really worth, you know, versus the price tag that I put on it. But that's just, you know, the buyer beware. Do your research and find the best deal out there, you know. And smartphones are a great resource for that, you mm -hmm. know, trying to find good prices. And, uh, you know, uh, talking about selling things as is, I mean, I, it's related, but... Uh, if you go buy a car from an auto auction, they take that seriously, as is. <laughs> they will give you the car with less than a quarter of a tank in it. Have a good day. The minute you drive <laughs> it off that lot legally, it is not their problem. They take that seriously, as is. Yeah, some places you got to... Well, I think that's why I went to CarMax. I mean, this is a you know advertisement for CarMax. But because they had all the things in place mm -hmm. that... You know, if it was wrong, I mean, I, they give me, you know, seven days to actually mm -hmm. return it. They give me 30, and they'll fix everything in the car that I, and it was great. It was an awesome experience. So I think it's buyer beware. I did. I made sure I went to a place where I could, you know. So what you're saying is that the market could solve yeah. those problems. It yeah. did solve it, yeah. Yeah, playing to, yeah. Uh, I guess, the, the opposite would be, like, playing to authority for, like, is this thing good? Will this hurt me? Please, government, tell me, so, sort of thing. Like, so, you know. Uh, yeah. So maybe what we're saying is that a, a third party could be an arbiter, so, similar to how Amazon um, has plenty of people selling stuff on their market. And they they oversee all of these transactions and somewhat handle them, depending. They have a policy and all that, but so so instead of using the government to handle, let's say, uh, like food, for instance, health and everything like that, to make sure wherever you're eating is clean and upkept and following a good, you know, whatever you want to call it, a process there. There you could have a private organization do that. That that's the thing. All these uh, things that people want from the government. Uh, you could have them all done by private organizations that are uh, paid for uh, uh, probably a hell of a lot cheaper. I, mean, I know, hell of a lot cheaper than the government charges for it, or not charges, steals for it. Yeah, which brings us back to the, the thing of the civilized society. Isn't it on the IRS building in Washington, D.C. that says taxation is the price we pay for a civilized society? <laughs> yeah, what is that? Is that, is that wow. Edmund Burke? Who is that? But it's, it's, it's yeah, an Englishman it of some be. sort uh -huh. that said that, yeah. yeah. That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Great propaganda. They actually found an old Roman mosaic that says something very, very similar. Not in those exact words, but it said something like roughly like that. They found some like old office and like it wasn't Pompeii, but it was one of those cities that had been thoroughly covered over and they found a mosaic and whatever it was, some sort of tax office that said good citizens pay taxes or something like that. You know? <laughs> so it's that that propaganda has been going on for a while. Donald Duck. Donald Duck and uh, are we talking about Scrooge McDuck or uh, <laughs> DuckTales? Uh, what's, uh, what's his name? Those are good. Uh, Scrooge McDuck. Your taxes. I know. <laughs> That's a full voice. But, uh. <laughs> yeah, that seems like to be one of the biggest violations of the nap, right? That is the giant elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. needs that kind of propaganda to say that we need to have taxation yeah. in order to have a civilized society. Well, it begs the question, what is civilized mm -hmm. when you're coercing people out of their time and money and effort? You know what effort? it's just like? It's just like any gang or mafia or whatever saying, you know what, you need some protection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just give yeah. us some money right. and it'll all be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've mentioned that before when you're, when you're in... In uh, Italy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You parked a car and on the next to the curb, and then a big, big, huge Italian guy comes up. You know, and he's like, "Hey, you know, <laughs> pay." You know, he wants to pay, and you pay him, and he keeps your car safe. You don't pay him, 
you get your window busted, you know. <laughs> and every curb has, every, every sidewalk has one of those guys, you know. Oh, man. It's like that, that mafia cliche of going into, like, a storefront of some sort and saying, like, Oh, uh, it looks like uh, maybe you might be in the need of some window insurance. It would be a shame if something were to happen here, you know, like that sort of a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what the government does exactly. when they ask for, yeah, yeah. for taxes. <clears throat> and they Same say, so name. what do people typically say when you talk to them about taxation being a violation of the non-aggression principle? What do they say? Roads. Roads. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we need yeah. to coerce people in order to get stuff done in an economy. Yeah. And it's like somehow you, entrepreneurs can't handle it, right? I saw an excellent I saw an excellent graphic the other day. It showed a picture of a, a car and talks about how all the engineers and planning and production went into creating this car. Mm -hmm. Then it has a road, and it's like, flat surface. <laughs> Can't possibly be created without okay. government force. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or another, another one is to like watch Formula One, where they have a fixed budget and a fixed number of cars, and there's the, the safety crew, the organizers of, of Formula One, and they set the parameters, and uh, engineers are always looking to shave ounces here, you know, and new rubber well, for tires, right. new, new this, new that, to, yeah. to, to mm -hmm. be able to get around the, the parameters, and they do it every year, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. yeah, we would be in flying machines, isn't that the... I've been oh, I mean, if, it, if, it, if it were for, small child, if I it were for intellectual yeah. property, that might be true. Yeah. Uh, that, that thing is, intellectual Over property there in the is, cheap seats, mm -hmm. we have a query. <laughs> Oh, no, I mean, that last comment just made me really have to speak up about something I heard the other day about um, how they've actually engineered, someone has engineered rubber that, like, won't wear, so you never have to really replace a tire unless, like, you puncture it or whatever. That's wow, awesome. That is how is that cool. possible, they, though? Under some, like, code, some science code, science right, code, we're in bed we're with the, the uh, They, they ascertained that... N that invention and just like canned it and won't let it like reach it's the market with a lot. because and it was harmful for the roads like, or something. It's harmful for like yeah the roads and tire <laughs> companies and God knows what else. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. But uh, so that's so just another example of how the tax like revenue from tires. Active aggression is taking shape and form. And, yeah. Um, and of course they would claim that they're not aggressing that right. they're just. Um, Imposing a rule that you have the choice whether to obey or not, um, <laughs> it's your choice, right? As, as Harry Reid says, it's voluntary, but if, <laughs> but if you don't pay them, you'll go to jail. <laughs> some you people go, go so to jail. You, you, you don't go to jail, some people go <laughs> yes. to jail. That's it. So, it, you know, the Always good is, to post that somewhere around February, yeah. Is coercion a violation of the NAP, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so. Threatening to punish yeah. somebody. Just the threat itself? Mm -hmm. Just the threat itself. Yeah. It, well, the a, worst a, a is threat will make you change your actions. So yeah, to threaten somebody with if I well, and ha then you have to say how credible you is the threat. Too. Yeah. You have to yeah, can you qualify it? Yeah. If it's by an organization called government, yes, yeah. exactly. Then, without so, yeah. a doubt, <laughs> yeah, dripping with coercion, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I guess we could Absolutely. be uh, let's see precise about this because Rand had a quote from the virtue of selfishness, and this was kind of like taken out of the Atlas Shrugged playbook. So the precondition of a civilized society, contrary to what the government says, right, is the barring of physical force from social relationships. In a civilized society, force may be used only in retaliation and only against those who initiate its use. So that's the defense, the self-defense, right? So Rothbard kind of clarified that even more because he said, wait a second, we can't have an entity called government in charge of you know, protecting us, or protecting our rights. This is what objectivism, as Ayn Rand outlined, holds that we need to have a, a coercive monopoly called government that's voluntarily funded, not tax funded, <laughs> right? But still coerces people because you have no choice other than that particular entity. That group of people saying, we're gonna provide justice services to everybody and either you you pay us or you don't get any services whatsoever. Like there can't be anyone competing with government for those respective individual rights and you know enforcing contracts and so forth. So Rothbard um, cleaned that up and said you know we need to have a 
free market of justice agencies that are not in violation of the NAP. They're not claiming legalized jurisdiction over everybody, basically. I, mm -hmm. I, I think another thing that might be a... But then won't they turn into warlords and take what, over? What about a, 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 a crowdfunded <laughs> type thing where, where they're basically all funded by donations? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, yeah, I can yeah, see that I working, too. I can see too. that working very well. Yeah, and, and they're... I, yeah, I, I think that would make sense. As a matter of fact, I listened to an episode of This Week in Startups, and the guy has got this crowdfunding site called Tilt, and it's <laughs> open source, and it's got some really cool features for the API stuff. And he paves the roads. Uh, well, they had a crowdfunding <laughs> thing for, um, like, a local neighborhood policing. Oh. Like, yeah. what, what's that app? Uh, Peacekeeper. Um, Peacekeeper, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Have you heard of that? I have. I think I listened to that guy interviewed on uh, Anarchist, right? I, I'm I'm pretty sure he's been on there before. I wouldn't be surprised if Jeff Bayward found him and was like, "Hey, you're a cool guy. You'd be on my show." Yeah. Yeah. So here's Rothbard's interpretation: No one may threaten or commit violence, aggress against another person, or property. Violence may be employed only against the person who commits commits such violence. That is only defensively against the aggressive violence of another. In short, no violence may be employed against a non-aggressor. Here is the fundamental rule from which can be deduced the entire corpus of libertarian theory. So that, I guess, appeared in egalitarianism as a revolt against nature and other essays. So could that be said that, like, Rothbard was the first person to attach the term libertarianism to it? Because, Perhaps. like, Ayn Rand didn't like libertarians, so that's a weird, interesting, completely off-topic sort of subject. We will do that at one point, right? But, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, so, I mean... You couldn't say that Rothbard was a progenitor of it, but he brought that over to that idea of philosophy maybe more than Rand did, perhaps, in it a way. It seems like he was, yeah, kind of... He well, kind of universalized it, I think. Mm -hmm. Whereas Rand had the, the one the one little holdout with the state, mm -hmm. Rothbard was able to complete that to say that to, no, th this includes everybody, not just yeah. those of us who don't claim... Power over others. Yeah, there's no state sanction. Fallacy right. of self exclusion. You, you're not exempt from this principle. And the principle, obviously, there's been debate about whether it's um, vulgar, right? The vulgar libertarian idea, mm -hmm. where you're just enforcing the NAP or advocating for it and you're not looking at the nuances and the contextual aspects. But, I mean, as a basic principle, that's what can actually dissolve the state. Once people renounce using force, Mm -hmm. And people look at mm -hmm. government as this entity to, to do their bidding, essentially. Exactly. To yeah. use, I mean, they've been aggressed against through the taxation and regulation, so then they really have no qualms of using it to their yeah. advantage in the marketplace. And so this is kind of a real, the root of the problem in our society, politically, at least. And, of course, it goes all the way back to the family because parents use coercion. We were talking about yeah. in the kitchen. Parents use coercion against their children. So... We're, we grow up in this milieu where we're being forced to do things that we don't want to do. Yeah, um, and not not convinced. We, you have to. Yeah, and uh, threatened with done, punishment too. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, we've done one on parent, uh, an episode on parenting, and we talked about how important it is to really uh, work with your kids and explain to them why something is a good idea, and not and not force them to do it, and get them to realize, oh yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. That's makes sense that they want me to do it this way, you know? And yeah. if it's a bad idea, they might even tell you, hey, look, you're not seeing this, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think something we were talking about earlier about how, like, the the NAP, uh, you know, you could be very, you know, uh, closed-minded about it and almost think of it in a weird, like, Spock sort of a way, for lack of a better way to describe it. To whereas, like, you know, like a, a new libertarian might say something like, well, if somebody walks onto your property, it's okay to shoot them. Mm. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. So, so because somebody walked onto my property, it was justified for me to just shoot them? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a violation of the non-aggressive principle. You can't just be like, oh, some person walked on my property, it's okay to just blow them away. That's, that's not, not right, you know? So Sit. that that it's important to make that distinction of like okay well there was no harm done That's there was no harm really done so yeah you, they may have wandered onto this geographical location a, you call your property but it doesn't mean that it's justified to it's then important. go. important yeah. if if there's no harm done if nobody's been harmed you should always try to solve that situation peacefully exactly no matter how upset emotional whatever it is 
uh, if no if nobody's been harmed, then there's no reason to uh, initiate any sort of force, violence, or anything. So that would be the the principle of proportionality, right? Yes. You can't use a disproportionate amount of force to remedy a yeah. situation of a of a rights. No violation. matter what they said, how emotional they got you. Yeah, exactly. Erring the, on the side of um, you know goodwill too, like. Um, if someone has been out in the woods and they're starving to death and they break yeah. into your cabin, and if you're not there, then, I mean, they've obviously violated your property rights, but they can compensate for that. They'll pay restitution gladly. Now, uh-huh. if you're in the cabin, then it's a situation of, like, okay, negotiation. Like, who is this person? How do you broach this, this situation where this person is, you know, on their last leg, you know? And if they're using force against you to get the food, then it's, like... A situation where your life is threatened, so then the self-defense issue comes up as well. But I think, as far as the non-aggression principle, you know, trying to settle things as peaceably as possible is the way to go. And that's the exact opposite of what government does. As a, as mm-hmm. a rule, it's a domination institution, so it's set up to punish people if they don't do what it says. And they've got numerous laws to uh, to enforce to try to keep that thing going. And I suppose with government itself, there is no gray, gray area like that, is there? Like, like you know, we're talking about like, oh well, if somebody wanders on your property, like mm-hmm. it's not it's not cool to shoot them. You know, you need to talk to them first and see what the situation is. Obviously, there's a good damn chance, based on most of humanity, that they didn't wander on your property to hurt you. Mm-hmm. But with government, it's like you broke the law. Fine. It's never like, oh well, you kind of sort of broke it. Let's you know. Okay, yeah, everybody's been pulled over where they've been let go one point or another, but more often than not, there's no gray area with government. It's either you get a fine or you don't get a fine. There's no like, ah, oh, here's a warning. Well, they have so many well, laws even, even where if, no victim. Yeah, even, exactly. even if you go through the court system and you're found not guilty of whatever bogus crime that they've charged you with, they took your yeah, they've time. still taken yeah. your time yeah. and your energy and possibly your probably your money for mm-hmm. to for which there is no recourse. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So along the lines of any monopoly, legalized monopoly is going to provide the highest price so called service and the lowest quality, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's no competition, there's no I mean the, the incentives are absolutely per- perverse in the legal system. So it's actually an injustice system. And no market signal to correct it. Mm-hmm. And they don't, they really don't understand the nap. They're never really taught it. They don't really have a curiosity oh, for it because it, it, it really does, It goes against what, what their modus operandi is. You know, that's yeah. not, they won't get things done if they didn't well, there was, in the, the I, I think, I think uh, empathy can be really important in these situations too, though. I mm-hmm. was listening to one of your podcasts where your guest, I forget who it was, was talking about his his issues with uh, business license. Oh yeah, that's a that's a popular one. I think it's one seventy five. Complete Liberty podcast. Yeah. Barbara was her name, right? She was like yeah, a yeah, yeah. In Carlsbad, yeah. I respect that you remember the number. Yeah, that's, <laughs> well, I remember that. That, 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 that is impressive. Quite a few people have remembered that one. It's it's Mike that, yeah, okay. that was a co host on the show, and he told his story of how he was being aggressed against because they were wanting to know how many years had gone by that he didn't have a business license so they could tax him on all those past years and stuff. Figure it out yourself, guys. So he used empathy and tried to understand what what was alive in this person that was asking this and what was the the level of fear, what was going on at her work and all that. And she basically, you know, stopped inquiring about that, dropped that issue as a result of him just kind of being real with her about what's going on, and also the the need uh, to respect others. That's that's a need that's sacrificed by people in government. Like they're they're in an institution that requires them to sacrifice the need to respect others, and that really puts them in a in a difficult position emotionally. So they, they tend to get defensive and counterattack and hang up the phone. If you listen to uh, Mark Stevens' No State Project, yeah, he, yeah he's know, got a bunch of those. Yeah. yeah, he plays those things where he's talking to them, asking really important questions, and they end up hanging up. So empathy can can be helpful to understand mm-hmm. just how much anxiety and fear and upsets in the person that's in this domination institution that's having a really hard time coming to terms with the truth of the matter. So they actually. Change their action from that conversation. Oh. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I'm wow. I've mm. never heard that before. 
but it makes yeah. me wonder, when, like, with a non-aggression principle, like, so if there was to be, like, um, you know, some sort of, uh, let, let, let's call it, I don't want to say machine, but let's say, you know, it, it, it becomes aware of itself in the world, it becomes, it becomes sentient, like, the non-aggression principle would still apply to, to a sentient machine, right, that is aware of itself and yeah. its surroundings and all that. One would hope so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, in my mind, it would. Yeah. Just like my opinion, man. Well, I mean, and so, you know, if, if, if you know, we continue on that course, would you, you know, if you were into such a thing, would you be, would you be able to have, you know, sex with it? You know, I mean, is that... What if two robots? Well, if... Like, if, yeah. if oh, robot, hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Are you guys. talking about a robot hey, right hey, now? Hey, hey, hey. No, I mean, that, that, that doesn't about. apply. Hold on, no, hold on. Different... We, we can't talk about this, we're out of time. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, we'll, we'll have to try this in another episode. Yeah, uh, next time. All right, we'll, we'll take it easy, guys. We'll get to it eventually. Cheers, have a good, good night. night.